with Andrew Barnett. Around 100,000 Londoners make Canary Wharf their home every day, streaming up out of this tube station, filling these buildings full of economists, analysts and advisors. If you're a currency trader and you want to know what's driving global currency markets, this is the place to come. And that's exactly why I'm here. I've come to London to chat with some heavy hitters and people that are in the know that can help us understand where big money is likely to play the currency markets in the coming months. So I sat down with economist and senior currency dealer from Go Markets, one of the fastest growing currency dealers in the world here in London. All right, Jay, thanks very much for joining us here on Money Exchange. We're outside the Bank of England, the uh, office of Mark Carney, the first non-UK citizen to be the governor of the Bank of England. He's been here for a few years now. He seems to have the Midas touch. The English economy is doing pretty well. Has he done a good job? Probably has. He came in and inherited a very difficult situation. Uh, Mervyn King left a very good, stable Bank of England policy, um, and he kind of came in to face a second wave of the economic crisis. There was a concern that when he would come in, he would change policy, there'd be a big raft of change. Really what we've seen is a strong MPC, a strong form of decision making. He's, uh, he's employed a, a laser fair approach, he's let the economy get on with it, steered interest rates and, uh, and monetary policy all around. What he's also done is given us great guidance. He's introduced a forward guidance concept. So now, rather than just focusing on interest rates, we're understanding what the Bank of England is looking at and he's trying to explain what they'll do next. Um, it's been great to be able to see that and for us to understand it. There is always the criticism that maybe he hasn't explained enough and we haven't seen enough action, but certainly as far as we've been so far, he's done what he's needed to do. The next phase is to take what seems like a very good economy in the face of it, take off the crutches, undo all the bandages and make sure that we can get out of the hospital situation. And that's going to be a real test for him. So inflation's been a bit of a challenge in the last six to 12 months here in the UK. Unemployment's doing pretty well, growth's doing well. Is it now time for the Bank of England to raise the rates and, and let the shackles off and, and let rates return to more normalised levels? The market seems to think it's time. They've certainly talked it into it. So you see a lot of pricing in the pound, you see a lot of pricing in the equity market. We are expecting a rate hike. Um, is it too soon? The summer's gone. We're going into the winter period now. The, the, market, the economy tends to slow down a little bit. Um, might, be a bit ahead, might be a bit ahead of time now. I think the US are looking at doing it later next year. Probably the same for the Bank of England now. We talked a little bit about a few weeks ago about the pound's stellar rally in the last few years. Is most of that expectation of a, of a rate hike in, here in the U, rate hike here in the UK now built into the price of the pound? Do you think? Yes, to a large extent, um, it has been one of the driving factors of the strength of sterling. We also do, as you've alluded to, have a very strong core economy at the moment, um, and it does make it very attractive. There are obviously still concerns out in the eurozone. Uh, and this does mean that you know, the UK is very much the focus of what's happening in the region. The UK has done so well without its biggest trading partner, Europe, doing well. What's made the real difference here for the UK to stand out against some of the other large economies such as France and Germany and other sectors of Europe that have really struggled on the, under the weight of high debt, low inflation? What's made the real difference here for the UK, do you think? I think having the autonomy or, or the, um, the individuality about our own economic policy. Um, you know, we've seen the Eurozone struggle a little bit with having one single economic policy. We've been able to distance ourselves from that, apply policy that suits us a little bit better here. Um, and of course, we've been able to have some rich pickings from across Europe, so some of the benefits of being part of the, the larger group. Um, and that has played some, some way to strengthen the UK. OK, we're talking about uh, the UK leaving the Eurozone. We're expecting a referendum here in the next 12 months. What are your thoughts on that? Are the, are the local folks here going to likely vote to leave the Eurozone? And if they do, what are the implications for the pound and the economy? You know, it, it's something that maybe was, was less likely previously with the change in the political spectrum now. We've got two political parties on the other end of it. Um, you know, the debate will rage on for a while. Um, will we leave the Eurozone or will we distance ourselves from it? We have a lot of benefits. You know, there's trade benefits from being in the Eurozone. There's migration, not just by numbers, but also by speciality. Um, we have political economic power, so it's a big decision to make. Um, I think it's a little bit early to call it, but certainly it's, it's going to be a raging debate as we get closer to it.